What's up you guys, it's Zidane, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to talk to you guys really briefly before I get into the video about what's happening today. I'm really excited. I am doing my first live Q&A, um, kind of get to know me and information session on getthatcuniversity.com's website. So if you have not heard about GTCU, it is the platform that we just recently started and launched um, to help you get into and through PA school. So if you haven't checked it out, go to getthatcuniversity.com city.com right now because I will be doing that Q&A session um, and information session today, uh, November 29th, yes, today at 4 p.m. So go on over to get that city.com right now so that you can sign up for that um, if you have not already done so, okay? That will be at 4 p.m. today. But this particular video is going to be about patient care experience. Now, I know a lot of you have had questions about patient care experience, but more specifically, how to calculate patient care experience. Um, so that is what I'm gonna be talking about. I had a question asked to me about how to do that, and so we're gonna be getting into it right now. Doing my dance, hey. I'm doing my dance. Back, you guys so if you haven't already done so go ahead take a look around if you like what you see go ahead and subscribe but let's get into this question by Amber it says hi Adana how does one calculate patient care experience hours I have been an MA since April 2016 40 hour work week do I just multiply the numbers of weeks I've been employed by 40 hours or realistically I probably spent time with patients getting their HPI doing EKGs flu strep tests giving injections, etc., maybe 20 to 30 minutes an hour on the hour average. So it's a big difference. How should I calculate? So I get asked this question a lot, a lot, because I mean, people are like, try, you know, you're trying to make sure that you're being honest about everything, that you're telling us exactly, well, us as in like the people who are looking at your application, exactly how many hours that you've had, like direct patient care experience. Um, however, uh, there are some schools that are looking for like the nitty gritty, right? Where it's like, okay, so how many minutes in the hour did you actually spend with the patient? Was it 10 minutes? In it um, because it was a slow day on that particular hour or was it you know 15 minutes or was it a full 40 minutes that is not like every program and honestly like when you go to CASPA's website if you ever have any questions about like calculating patient care experience or what exactly is patient care experience a place to go is the CASPA liaison website because they're the ones that are actually like calculating or putting all of this information in, in terms of your um, GPA and, and giving you your science GPA and all of your patient care experience and all of that. So let's just head on over to CASPA right now. Um, and then we can make sure that we know exactly what we're talking about. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have this like put up on the screen for you guys so that you guys can see exactly where I am, but also um, exactly how you can go about in kind of determining what is patient care experience, okay? Let us go on over there right now to CASPA. So this is like the help uh, liaison, help.liaisonedu.com slash CASPA. So this is the actual website that you would go to. I really just Googled um, CASPA application, um, CASPA frequently asked questions, and then I went to the experiences. And you see, like, it's already purple because I've been here before. All right, and so when you go into that particular section where it's talking about your experiences, so your healthcare experience, your volunteer experience, all of that stuff, any research or patient care experience, which is what we're really here for, this is what you go into. So it defines what patient care experience is. So experiences in which you are directly responsible for a patient's care. For example, prescribing medication, performing procedures, directing a course of treatment, designing a treatment regimen. And so all of these are kind of like higher level stuff. So like if you're a nurse or things like that, um, you're, you know, obviously like uh, giving these, uh, directing the course of treatment and things like that, depending on the type of nurse that you are, right? So and that's that stuff, or you're actively working on a patient as a nurse, paramedic, EMT, CNA, phlebotomist, physical therapist, dental hygienist, etc. Because there are so many fields in healthcare that you can actually be directing the patient's care. Okay, so now with that being said, when you go down and it talks about how you enter your experience, 
Um, if you go down to number five, it says enter the date or date range in which the experience took place. So for Amber, she was saying that she had worked from since April of 2016. So you've been working as an MA for four years. Okay. So that's a lot of experience, 40 hours a week. So you would enter that date range. It says, note your experiences will not display on your application in any specific order, regardless of the dates. Okay. And then it says, you note that you cannot repeat hours between experience types. So if position duties encompass more than one section, um, enter the position in both sections and divide the hours and duties accordingly. For example, a 40 hour work week. So this is what we're talking about. 40 hour work week position with 10 hours of a week of research and 30 hours a week of direct patient care would be entered under both research and patient care types with the appropriate hours and duties listed within each entry. So right there, it's telling you exactly how to do it, right? Because you're working a 40 hour work week, right? So uh, like me, I'm working 72 hours um, in, well, really, yeah, 70, about 72, a little bit more, almost 80 hours in a two week period. Am I on like doing patient care stuff every second of those hours? No. And in here, it's saying the same thing. You're working 40 hours, but 10 hours, you're really doing like research and 40 hours is your direct patient care experience. You're not on that patient every minute of that 30 hours. You're not, okay? And, and that's, let's just be realistic. Not everybody is sitting up here and they're writing down are documenting, you know, like, okay, I spent 15 minutes here with this patient. All right. I spent 10 minutes. I had to go do the HPI and then get this, their strep test done. No, you're, it's a general term, right? So if you're working a 40 hour work week, yes. Um, if that's all you're doing, if all your MA job counts for you to do is sit up here and you know, direct that patient's care by doing strep and flu and HPI and EKGs and all that stuff, then that is what you're calculating. So you would multiply, you know, your last four years of work. So you do it four times your whatever. If I don't know if you've had vacation time or however you do that. So you do have to take those things into consideration, but whatever, how many hours of work you've had for the last four years, like legitimately and multiply that by 40. And then that is what you would put in. So, um, when you are sitting up here and you're trying to figure that out, make sure you're including any vacation or sick time or anything like that, because you can't just say, Oh, okay. 52 hours a week times 40 and that's it. Okay. But this is coming straight from CASPA. Okay. Just like you, you want to go and you want to check this research out yourself. You want to make sure that what I'm saying is correct. Go to the CASPA website, look at that. But as I always say, okay, you do your research. So it's on you to kind of go ahead and look at the schools that you're interested in and ask them, Hey, you know, I've been an MA for four years. I can't legitimately say that I've directed the patient's care every minute of those 40 hours in that four year period that I've been scheduled to work. But, um, I've been doing this for four years. How would you like me to calculate it? And if they say something different than what Casper is saying, or than what I'm saying, then you do that because that's the program that you're trying to get into. And a way to help you get into programs like that is by doing your research, coming on places like YouTube and get that to the university and, you know, Googling stuff and going on the school's website because you want to make sure that all of the information that you're getting is a, like accurate information and information that is actually going to help you get in to PA school. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, and hopefully it answers all of you guys' questions that have been asking me, how do you calculate direct patient care experience? Um, but this is how you do it. Okay. So you just go ahead and give the general number. All right. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for asking the question. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.